Once again, welcome to my lecture with a new topic in my YouTube channel, Professor LPT. Today's topic is carcass utilization plant, which we can call as a rendering plant. As you remember, we are discussing about the byproducts utilization in which this is one of the very important aspect for utilization of byproducts, especially the non-edible or condemned materials. So today we will discuss first about the byproducts plant briefly and then we will discuss more about the rendering plant, different kind of machineries and units, how it works briefly. Though the main objective today is to discuss about the plant only. Later on in another lecture I will discuss about the process of rendering. So today we will also discuss about the design and layout of the rendering plant, some of the other considerations, capacity and some of the other aspect like different kind of considerations, general considerations for establishing a dairy uh, rendering plant and also the relevant risk or nuisance or deodorization, ventilation, etc. in this lecture. Before we discuss about the rendering, let me first briefly tell about the byproducts plant. So byproducts plant is an idea of utilizing different kind of byproducts where there will be different units, separate unit for rendering for utilizing the condemned materials or dead animals and carcasses. Then there will be a separate unit for utilization of hide and skin and another separate unit should be there for utilization of guards and intestines etc. Sometimes there can be other units for utilization of glandular byproducts etc. So here is the list, there is rendering unit, gut processing unit, hide and skin store and processing unit and there should be effluent treatment plant, electrical room with boiler, mechanical section for different maintenance and other facilities, storage uh, in, uh, including cold storage because all the materials may get spoiled and get decomposed so it has to be stored in cold. Then office and store for the different materials to store. There should be the public amenities for the workers including toilet, bath, changing room etc. And there is dispatch section for sending the ready materials. So this is briefly about the byproducts plant but we will focus mainly today on rendering plant. Before we discuss about the rendering plant, let us have a brief idea about the rendering process. So rendering is a process in which the animal tissues can be processed into valuable products like fat and other different kind of meals. So here is a brief outline about the flow chart that is the raw materials, there is a size reduction, then processing with steam which do the sterilization also. After that the fats and oils are separated and rest of the solids are separated. This fat part is going through certain processing and stored and it goes for different kind of industrial use or for livestock feed in ration making and the all other materials solid part it, it is further dried and made into meals. It can be different kind of meals like blood meal, meat meal or carcass meal depending on the raw material. So next we will see the actual plant that is for rendering. Here we will see a brief outline or layout of carcass utilization plant or also called rendering plant. Rendering can be two types that is dry rendering and wet rendering which we will discuss more details later. So in wet rendering this is mainly directly with water or steam the materials are cooked and digested and sterilized whereas in dry rendering there is two different chamber the inner chamber will have the raw materials and outer chamber will have the steam so there is a indirect heating so in this layout where what we can see in the right side there is the incoming of materials if it is dead animal there will be a flaying process separate places there then at the bottom right there is a boiler and we can see there is staircase there is a upper floor from which the actual loading is done in case of dry rendering which we will discuss details later 
and there is a staircase in this side at the middle there is a wall to separate the clean section and unclean section once the material is cooked it is considered as clean safe and sterilized so there is a fat fat separation section for separating the fat from the cooked materials and then the fat is stored and there is a milling section where the solid materials are dried and ground and then it is stored in a mill store so this is a brief outline of the carcass utilization plant here we can see at a glance uh, a, a dry rendering plant in a big industrial setup if we see the left side picture there is a cylindrical structure which is the main part for rendering that is called dry renderer or dry rendering cooker which works like a autoclave with the different stages by steam but the cooking happens indirectly in the right side there are other units like pre baker unit there is a grinding unit or there is a fat separation unit all this we are going to see later now we will discuss briefly about some of the major equipments in case of carcass utilization plant or rendering plant the first one here is boiler so as you know boiler is for producing the steam and steam is required for actual processing or sterilization of the material so which happens in different stages that we will discuss in the next lecture so boiler of suitable capacity should be used keeping in view the average steam consumption of rendering the average steam consumption can be calculated like 1.25 pound of steam for 1 pound of raw material from this uh, rough idea insulation of steam pipeline and boiler with fiberglass covered with aluminum sheet reduces the heat loss so this is a economic aspect heat should not be lost and then it is more costly so all the pipelines will be covered with glass wool and then covered with aluminum sheet the boiler with working steam pressure of less than 80 pounds should not be used especially when by products such as meat meal bone meal etc are to be manufactured so this is about the boiler so next major equipment is wet renderer that is the machine or processor for wet rendering as i mentioned earlier in wet rendering it's a old practice in which the raw materials are directly processed by injecting the live steam so the wet renderer is usually a vertical cylindrical cooker having a cone shaped bottom with a valve outlet of 8 to 12 inches in diameter whereas at the top of top there is a manhole through which the raw material is loaded and a valve through which obnoxious gases escape without reducing the pressure several draw up cocks are provided on the side of the cooker to enable fat and water to be removed so in this process after processing the solid material the liquid water and the liquid fat get separated into three layers which can be separated by opening different valve in wet rendering a pressure of 40 pounds is usually applied the time required varies from 4 to 6 hours the final product that is the slash of meat and bone sometimes it is called tankage is available after draining the water the water can be removed but still it may have about 55% moisture and which require further drying to reduce the moisture level below 8% here we can see the picture of a boiler actually boiler can be of different types like fuel operated or electrically operated and in the right side we can see a prototype diagram for wet rendering of course this is a old technology and it is not much preferred nowadays but separately i will discuss more details about the wet rendering process with proper diagram now about dry renderer or dry rendering cooker which is one of the most important part for dry rendering or carcass utilization plant so in this case there is a jacketed machine outside there will be steam and the inner chamber only will have the raw material it is the process where all the moisture is eliminated without losing any nutrients a dry renderer is a horizontal steam jacket cooker equipped 
with a set of agitators in the center which keeps the material in continuous motion. So in this case only outside of the chamber will have steam and also at the center of the main chamber there will be a agitator with hands, agitating hands which will also have the steam inside but they never come in contact with the materials. The steam is allowed into the jacket only. The dry rendering process yields 20% higher than wet rendering as the water soluble extractive and proteins suspended are not discarded. In dry rendering process the meat and bones are cooked in its own steam and fried in its own fat. The resulting end products are called crackling. So we will discuss more details about the process of rendering and the structure of the renderer we are going to see. Here we will see and discuss about the dry rendering plant with these photographs. In the bottom left we can see pre-breaker where if it is a large full animal or dead animal it will be first hide will be removed and then it will be cut into broken into pieces by this pre-breaker. Then in the top right side we can see the actual rendering machine and the bottom we can see more details structure. So the loading will be done at the top and generally it will be at the first floor level. So in case of big commercial unit there will be everything done with the help of hoisting system. So there will be a container after breaking it will be lifted to the top and it will be loaded into the loading chamber and then the process go on step by step which we will discuss later in the next lecture. Now another important set of machineries like fat separators as I told after cooking the materials which comes out it will be separated the fat portion and the non-fat or other solid portion. So fat in the cracklings may be re reduced into two ways that is by mechanical way or by chemical way. So the mechanical methods include hydraulic press which develops a pressure of 4000 pounds per inch or by a centrifugal turbine fat extractor or a centrifuge we can say which we are going to see later in the next lecture and also by passing the cracklings through a fat expeller. So this is a screw types fat separator which is used in the industry for all other purpose. By using any of the three methods still there will be about 10% fat left in the cracklings. Then the, there is a chemical method in chemical method which involves solvent extraction process by using petroleum ether or ether heptane or perchloroethylene which leaves as low as 0.5% of fat in the cracklings. Here we can see different kind of mechanical fat separation devices in the left side top that is a centrifuge or sometimes called basket centrifuge. Here again there will be a jacketed steam supply outside to keep the fat in liquid condition and inside there will be the loaded material in basket and it will be operated in high speed under the centrifugal force the liquid fat will come out and which will be collected. In the top right side we can see that is a screw type that is the fat expeller industrially it is used in different kind of fat separation or oil mill and in the bottom we can see the hydraulic press in which the materials will be packed in a in a sack or bag and it will be kept in between two part where it will be pressed and the liquid will be separated. The another unit is the milling unit or grinding unit after the separation of fat the solid material is dried and it should be ground for which the, 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 the crackling it, it is to be made into a fine powder. So there are different kind of system used that like disintegrator or swing beater or hammer mill type are used we can see in the right side photograph and there will be a cyclone separator and bagging unit or sacking unit. So cyclone separator that is used for separating the powders from the air and then there will be bagging unit for, for collection. And there will be a packaging unit after separating the powder it should be packed so ground meat come bone meal or meat meal or whatever other material can be packed in bulk as per requirement. So this is a separate unit required for final packaging and go for storage. 
so we have briefly discussed about the important machineries for a rendering plant now we will discuss some of the other aspect like prerequisites and other general consideration for establishing a rendering plant or carcass utilization plant so first we will see the prerequisites for setting rendering plant the setup of a rendering plant is feasible only if a constant and sufficient supply of raw material is guaranteed so this is the first requirement then geographical barriers such as mountain areas lack of transport facilities low concentration of animal and slaughterhouses in area are the major factors and then the plant should be subject to government licensing to satisfy regulations and conditions of pollution control board of the state or center so these are some of the important point which we have to consider before planning for establishing a rendering plant or carcass utilization plant now we will see some of the general considerations for establishing a carcass utilization plant even for by products plant a by products plant may be an integral part of the abattoir provided it is strictly separated from it that means it can be part of a complex abattoir come by products plant but it should be away from the actual slaughterhouse in some countries legislation prohibits a combined abattoir and by products plant in such cases the by products plant must be built separately wherever materials from other sources are to be used it is advisable to have a by product plant located nearby a abattoir and a separate entrance should be provided for the material to bring in so if we wish to take the materials from outside then the by product plant or the rendering plant can be nearby the abattoir but with a separate entry and quite away from the abattoir so in continuation to general considerations for establishing a by product plant or a rendering plant it is often better to have a an abattoir combined with a by products plant constructed in a poorly inhabited area that means it should be away from residential area when the abattoir is adjacent to the by products plant the passage between them should always be paved with concrete stones or bricks the passage should have a slope from abattoir towards the by products plant to prevent the pollution of abattoir during heavy rains or due to the clogging of the drains wherever possible an overhead rail should lead from the abattoir to the by products plant for transporting condemned carcasses offals and parts in suspended trolleys so these are the another few things to be considered for establishing the by products plant or rendering plant along with the abattoir in continuation to general considerations if trucks are used for transportation of the carcasses or offals they should be made of metals for hygienic maintenance so we are going to transport all the dead animals sometime they may be decomposed so they need to be regularly cleaned and sanitized so it needs to be with the metal flooring the by products plant building should have its own screen drains leading to a gutter fitted with separate grease tap so proper drainage and it should not come towards the abattoir all the drains should pass away from the slaughter hall so because this part of the processing is much more risky with more amount of pathogens and other microbial contamination so the drainage everything should go away from the abattoir there should not be any communication between the individual sections of the plant each one should have its own entrance and exit so this point we have already discussed even in case of designing the abattoir where there are different units and sections and they should have their own entry and exit the same principle should be followed here in case of by products plant or rendering plant now here briefly about the location of a bit uh, location of by products plant or rendering plant the government should approve the location of rendering plant and the area from where the plant will collect the raw materials a rendering plant should always be situated away from human habitants but nearer to the availability of raw materials for example animal production areas near slaughterhouses 
and meat processing plants or near harbor so these are the points to be taken care of while selecting a location or site for establishing a by products plant or carcass utilization plant or sometime we can say rendering plant now briefly we will discuss about the capacity of the plant the number of dead animals expected in the area and condemned carcasses from the abattoir should be taken into account to decide the plant's capacity so this is the first thing number of animals expected as dead or from the abattoir a plant should have a more capacity than is necessary under normal circumstances this is to process materials during natural calamities so often we see natural calamities when the number of animals may die so this plant should be able to process that extra materials any increase in rendering materials in the future should possibly to be accommodated so we should have a futuristic view to accommodate the increase in cap number of materials or dead animals and the working shifts of the employees should suffice the rendering plant capacity in these cases so sometime the extra materials or excess materials can be processed by increasing the number of shifts so this is about the layout of the rendering plant which i have discussed briefly at the beginning so here are some of the more important aspects the rendering plant handles both infective raw materials and sterilized end products which is used as livestock feed so as i told the dead materials or the condemned materials will be processed but it is converted into safe materials after sterilization so these two things should be separated sometime the very good quality materials are processed for edible purpose also in that case it is done in a separate rendering process or unit so utmost importance should be given that the two materials do not come in contact with each other that is the infective raw materials and the safe and finished sterilized materials should not be in touch and there should not be any cross contamination for this reason the plant will be strictly divided into two part that is unclean section and clean section the unclean section handles the infective raw materials whereas the clean section handles the end products after processing now here briefly we will discuss about the unclean section the infective raw materials are brought in and handled in this section it must be fly and vermin proof the components of this sections are unloading platform that is when the materials are arriving from outside there should be a place for unloading to receive the raw materials then there will be room for skinning or cutting of the dead animals that is the flaying area i have shown earlier and also to cut them in a bigger size and further to break them in a pre breaker that's an area then room for salting storing of hide so there is a separate section for handling the hides and skins so skins and hides need to be stored for some time some time even two weeks so before being sent to the tannery so they have to be washed cleaned salted and stored which we have discussed earlier in case of hide and skin uh, preservation and then loading platform this is the platform from where the materials are loaded into the processing or rendering cooker so this will be at a elevated first floor level and generally in case of bigger plant it will be lifted with the hoisting system and it will be loaded so to send the above materials to the tannery through vehicles in continuation about the unclean section the floor and walls should be covered with tiles for easy cleaning and disinfection especially the skinning rooms with sewage for waste water the plant should be of sufficient size and have enough water including hot water and steam for sterilization at various points it requires high pressure jet cleaning and disinfection of floors surfaces equipment trolleys pre breaker etc and if rain treatment plant and disposal system is mandatory so these are some of the other aspect in the unclean section now for clean section here the sterilized end products are handled and stored and it consists of room for sterilization of machinery so once in a day after the operation we need to sterilize the machinery otherwise the pathogens may remain by chance or there will be contamination room for hydraulic press 
or centrifuge where the fats are separated so this is coming under clean section room for milling unit that is for grinding and making the powder or meal from different cooked and dried materials room for fat refinery there is a fat separation i have already told and then there is fat storage and fat settling tank etc to be their separate room room for storage of meat meal bone meal fat so this is a storage separate area coming under this clean section in addition there are other facilities like cloak room this is divided into two one for the working clothes and another for home going ones with the provision of wash basin showers with hot and cold water and there should be dining room for the personnel engaged and also the truck drivers involved even sometime it has to be separated for the people working in the clean section and for the people working in the unclean section a few more considerations on layout of rendering plant the renderer is installed in such a manner that the loading is in unclean section and end products discharge door in the clean section where the packing dispatch takes place so this division is created by constructing a wall across the renderer so the loading section comes under the unclean area and the discharge section comes in the clean area in between there is a wall which separates these two the various units of the plant are chosen and arranged to provide a continuous flow of operation so all the units should be located in such a manner that it goes in a continuous manner the plant premises must have a floor slope of 0.5 inch per feet or 1 is to 24 so this is the slope required for regular washing and drainage of the water from the floor and if bones are to be processed there we need a wet renderer so wet renderer should be placed above the dry renderer and the discharge from the top must fall on the charger of the dry renderer so when we need both the wet renderer will be at the top after processing it will directly low fall and get loaded into the dry renderer now we will discuss some of the important issues related to carcass utilization plant one the most important is due to the production of smell that is prevention of nuisance the by product plant emits a large quantity of obnoxious gases since dead animals are handled which might have decomposed so materials may be allowed to accumulate and decomposes inside the building or quick regular sanitary handling may not be carried out so these failure also can cause more nuisance or production of obnoxious gases so this can be prevented by construction of a well designed plant that handles fresh materials as far as possible or we should be able to store them in a low temperature in cold storage having the plant close to the abattoir so that quicker processing occurs deodorization arrangement should be there so there, though there is production of obnoxious gases these gases can be neutralized by the process of deodorization which we are going to discuss next and dry renderer produce a higher yield and less offensive odors unlike the wet renderer so we should preferably go for dry rendering which is more profitable and less nuisance creating proper effluent treatment and odor control so there is proper treatment should be there for the effluent and for the odor so that we can avoid all this nuisance now we will discuss about deodorization so some arrangements for reducing the odor the number one pass the fumes from the rendering vessel into the boiler stock where they are burnt and dispersed so the impact of odor will be reduced second disperse the hot vapors in cooling water where they are dissolved and discharged into the effluent disposal system the equipment is called condenser and some condensers are operated by vacuum pump so all the orders coming are injected into the condenser where it will be absorbed with the liquid and it will go to the drainage and there it will be treated in the effluent treatment plant the third option is chemical treatment like chlorination or absorption by activated carbons generally dry rendering equipment produces much less offensive odor than wet rendering now the last is about the importance of ventilation so this kind of plant needs a large capacity of ventilation otherwise it can create lot of troubles 
the whole rendering operation releases a large amount of steam and if the proper ventilation arrangement is not done it can create so many difficulty like condensation and corrosion of the building and equipments growth of molds and bacteria due to moist conditions intolerable working condition for the workers so for this prefabricated steel structure with the ventilated ridges all along the top of the roof and then to the walls should be provided the use of iron sheets for roofing should be avoided since it corrodes rapidly due to the condensation it will be more susceptible for corrosion so such iron sheets should be avoided in the construction of the byproduct plant or rendering plant now we are at the end of today's lecture that today we have discussed about the carcass utilization plant but initially i have briefly discussed about the byproducts utilization plant and different units and then i have discussed different kind of uh, units or machineries required for rendering plant or car carcass utilization plant and then later i have discussed about the layout requirement location capacity different general aspects for establishing a rendering plant and finally i have discussed some of the limitations or nuisances and how to overcome them so in a next lecture i will discuss more details about the process or operation of rendering thank you thanks for watching